bright duty every student matters now let's look at the first question the very first question is what is sludge so we studied during the process of uh, the uh, what uh, during the processes in the uh, water waste water treatment plants the water after being uh, you know clarified it went into or rather for being clarified it went into the first sedimentation tank right what happened in the first sedimentation tank was uh, that there was the settlement of your uh, of the solid uh, waste like feces right this first sedimentation tank was sloped in the middle and the water that was there uh, you know was staying in that uh, you know stayed in that tank for some time after that what happened was that the uh, you know this solid waste matter that is your feces usually settled in the tank and was removed with the help of the scraper this solid settled matter was called as the sludge right and this sludge once removed was used uh, in the or it was kept in another separate tank where the decomposition took place and the by product that is the biogas was used for fuel and the production of electricity explain the function of bar screens in the waste water treatment plant so bar screens were used to remove any large pieces to remove large pieces of garbage of garbage like polythene bags bags rags plastic or metal bottles etc right so basically it was used for physical removal right which of the following is or are the product of waste water treatment so biogas sludge both biogas and sludge or aerator so we know that both biogas and sludge are the products of your waste water treatments in a filtration plant water is filtered using the layer of sand and clay clay and fine gravel sand and fine gravel sand fine gravel and medium gravel so the answer to this question is sand fine gravel and medium clay gravel what is activated sludge so activated sludge is formed in the second uh, sedimentation tank now this sedimentation tank is after the aerator where the decomposition or the consumption of uh, uh, human waste animal waste or any kind of waste which might be present in the uh, you know uh, water or the clarified water is cleaned up right you, because of the uh, aerobic bacteria right this takes place in the second uh, uh, sedimentation tank where this water goes and gets uh, stays there for some time again in this case this tank is sloped from the middle and once the water goes into it the activated sludge or rather i should say the microbes the microbes that is the aerobic microbes settle down right these aerobic microbes settle down along with the products that they have decomposed or you know they have consumed and these uh, settlement that happens in the second sedimentation tank is removed in the form of your activated sludge right this activated sludge has 97% of water which is dried off and then it is used as 97% water which is dried off and then it is used as manure in the fields why should oils and fats be not released in the 
drains so fat, uh, oils and fats should not be released in the drains because when it, when you release it in the drain what happens is that they block the pipes instead of that if you are able to instead of this if you are able to uh, you know throw it in the dustbin that is a better way of disposal right so that is why oils and fats should not be released into the drains then explain the relationship between sanitation and disease now understand sanitation and disease have a very important relationship because uh, whenever we are talking about sanitation it is so that we keep our environment clean wherever there is a dirty area if we take an example of an open drain we see that there are different mosquitoes flies breeding in it also we see that uh, you know there are different microbes that might cause different kinds of diseases right so keeping that drain clean and closed is a sanitation uh, you can say it's a, sanit a step towards sanitation and it helps in reducing or removing that disease from that area another important uh, if you can say uh, you know a step is not to defecate in the open because open defecation say in the open fields in dry river beds near the railway tracks this again causes uh, you know uh, the environment to become unclean unhygienic and this again further uh, you know uh, facilitates the growth of disease causing microbes now if you talk about say if you take an example of a disease say typhoid usually it is the water it is the waterborne disease and people uh, get whenever the people get in touch with dirty water that is the water that is contaminated with the feces of a person who was already suffering with this disease usually that person gets the fever right so in this way we see if we keep uh, the uh, you know human excreta uh, if we manage the uh, you know this human excreta and this sewage in such a way that people shouldn't come in contact with it so it first of all it will help in sanitation thus helping in curbing the diseases in that area right so this is how we can relate the importance of and reduction of diseases Name two alternative arrangements for sewage disposal where there is no sewage system. So whenever there is no sewage system, there are two ways. One is the septic tanks and uh, you can also say chemical pits, right? Apart from that, or chemical toilets, then you also have composting pits. And this is how the uh, you know these are the alternative arrangements through which the human excreta or sewage can be managed where there is no ways of disposal so if there is no sewage system uh, these are the three ways in which uh, human uh, or sewage can be managed a man traveling in a train threw an empty packet of food on the platform do you think this is a proper waste disposal method no this is not uh, the pra uh, proper uh, disposal method there are dustbins in the train as well that person could have gotten up and gone to the uh, you know dustbin if he didn't want to do that he should have kept it in his pockets or in his bag and then went to the destination and thrown it into the dustbin so any kind of empty food packet or anything which needs to be disposed of should be kept in a packet if you do not have a dustbin and then it should be thrown off why should we not throw used tea leaves into the sink because this will choke the pipes of the drain of the drain so if you are throwing these uh, you know used uh, tea leaves or if you are throwing uh, you know food material into the drain what will happen they will choke the pipe and thus harming the sewage system around in your home as well as in your society so in this way in this chapter we saw that what exactly is waste water and how we can deal with it i hope you were able to understand the whole process properly and also you were able to understand your role in maintenance of you know sanitation around your home and your society thank you